something I want you to think about, and I want the viewers to think about is, so yeah, for Rust console, I actually downloaded it. They're, they're really kind of neglecting uh, their OG player base. So it's like a religion. And for those guys who had mastered the recoil, we're also pissed off because they're like, okay, what's my permanent progression? I don't really think they're actively working on like anti-cheat stuff besides informing that company to go and do that. And for how many complaints and things they get, you feel like they would just switch or like start working on their own stuff. Do you think that there may be a disconnect between them and the community because they are somewhat scared or anxious of tweaking something that's already existing and then actually going worse than it already is? 27th of February, I sat down in a call with Jack Shepard. Jack Shepard is a unique PC Rust YouTuber. The videos he covers is not your typical wipe progression videos. He hosts and helps out with events as well as making documentaries surrounding the popular topics that are going on within the game and its community. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with Jack talking about both Rust PC and Rust console, where it's at, the cheating problem, what could be better and the things we would like to add to the game that we believe would make the game overall a better experience for his community. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've seen, uh, I keep in, like, in connect with how Rust is going, like, on the PC side of things. And I wanted to kind of hear your perspective since, you know, you seem like you've played the game a long, long time. What's happened to the game now about two years ago wasn't really, not so much in a negative light, but just in conversation? I think it's, uh, the public relations, I think, is the big thing for Face Punch. I think they've gone about communicating these new updates in more of a negative way and they're not being as transparent with the community yeah so like a lot of things people will complain about is like pay to win dlcs right initially it started off super innocent you have like the arctic suit that's a little bit controversial you have like a, I think a buff if you're in like the snow and then recently this year you have like weapon racks or uh, the barrels which are like huge because you can store more stuff in like a smaller space and you know being around since the beginning, right? Playing the mm. game since 2014, and then seeing them say on these dev blogs, hey, pay to win, we'll never do that. And the whole community is like, hell yeah, man, you know, you go, Gary, you know, you're sticking yeah. to your guns. And then a couple years down the line, they're slowly kind of selling out. And so I think that was a, a big one. Um, failed promises, too, I think is huge. Some of the things you can go and see is like, Face Punch promised in the HDRP update, which I think was in 2020, so this was a while back. But they went and said, oh, we're gonna change like how the game looks and there's gonna be a massive performance boost and everyone's gonna be super happy with that. And so they changed how the game looked, but they never like updated or optimized performance. And so you're kind of missing that rust feel and it feels like more commercialized and the game's still performing poorly, right? Yeah. And I think a big thing too is as communities get bigger and stuff in general, you have issues where previously everybody's playing on the same server because there's only so many servers and now people have more like radical views just like in real life. Like they go and play modded so their uh, perspective's super skewed or mm -hmm. they only go and play vanilla, right? And so then you, these people are kind of clashing instead of coming together for bigger issues. Yeah. And then something too, which I think is a huge issue, is um, they made promises about like never changing gunplay or a bunch of things that were like never broken and they still decide, oh, we need to fix this so we can go and like market to more people. Um, so I think that's kind of a, those are some of the main points. Obviously we could sit here all day and I could probably <laughs> have a whole list for you, but. <laughs> no, one of, one of the uh, kind of bullet points that I had was from all the, when I went on Twitter, and a lot of uh, big names in the PC community were talking about how, what was it, the the attack heli that just suddenly came into the game and people were like, what, what's going on here? Like we were never told about this. I believe it's called the attack heli. I don't play PC much these days, but, uh, or oh, gunship, yeah. That was one of the things where everyone was kind of like perplexed. It was like, where's this come from? we didn't have any sort of warning this was coming to the game if i'm right in saying because i remember i think blueprint uh tweeted about it so i it's yeah it seems as if and it kind of connects with ross console in a way 
trying to connect both of them, even though they're completely in different times of its lifespan. We had false promises of community servers coming with the launch of the game, and that was hitting on nearly three years ago. We've only now just gotten them. So it seems as if, I, I don't know whether it happens in other games, but it seems as if within both Rusts, we've had false promises from the game developers, which obviously doesn't set a good time with the community. Yeah, I think they've had a good history previously. I mean, I talk about it in the Recoil documentary about like how the community is super toxic, and uh, that might be one of the reasons they don't want to proceed with feedback. But I think the general like upsetting part for creators at this point as well, too, is that the communication just isn't very clear. Like. Everyone complains about the AK recoil, right? And so they put in this recent update, I think, for January of this year, saying, hey, we're going to go and work on gunplay. Like, and that's a big concern from everybody, right? Okay, we're going to go work on gunplay. Great. And then, you know, for what you just mentioned about, like, the attack helicopters, which I think were last year, the first thing they add and, you know, the major update, your first update this year, everyone's on the edge of their seat. Okay, are they going to change AK recoil? Are they going to do this? They add metal detectors, which I is... Saw that. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, it's what like, what, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> like, and then they have to justify it and stuff, too. It just, it feels like, like, I get it's a business and stuff, but it just feels like super, like, concerning. I, I don't know. Um, like, I think Face Punch, they're a good company and stuff. They do a good job and things. I just, I don't understand why there's, like, such a disconnect with the, the community. It's pretty unfortunate. Do you think that there may be a disconnect between them and the community because they are somewhat scared or anxious of tweaking something that's already existing and then actually going worse than it already is? I would probably disagree with that because the whole thing is they're already doing that um, for like the AK recoil was something that a lot of people felt like shouldn't be fixed. Yeah. I think the big issue is they're they're really kind of neglecting uh their og player base and i let me see here i think i had like something in my notes i had like an example about like golf like if you played golf when you were like a kid right you're mm. like really into golf you've been doing that for like 10 15 years you would say you're like an og golf player whatever the case is and then imagine if like a bunch of celebrities who don't play golf by the way come over and they play golf for a couple of months and they're like yeah you should change these game rules this is why this sucks you know, I don't like this. And so, you know, the golf commission or whatever club you're at, they go and change everything. And now all those OG golf players, <laughs> it sounds so funny, <laughs> but now they're upset, right? Because yeah. they've been like long-term users. They're going to stick around to continue playing golf for the rest of their life. And I feel like that's the case for a lot of Rust players too. And so they're being very ignorant in a sense by neglecting their OG player base because these are the people who are going to buy the skins and commit to the community and give good feedback and know what work and what doesn't work because they've been a witness to all of it. And uh, yeah, it's just, I it's it's upsetting. And I can see where Face Punch wants to come from too, right? They're a business. Yeah. I saw like a documentary the other day for Tarkov where Tarkov's losing a lot of money because they're sticking to the OG player base and they won't monetize and things like that. And so that's like also an issue for the game because the game's going to get worse because of that. They don't have funds and you know if you bought tarkov three years ago you still have it today so like how are we making money for this business so i think there's a fair balance to go and find of making rust more mainstream but uh whatever they're doing right now just isn't it and they really i in my opinion i really feel like they have to like the end of the year to go and turn things around for 2024 otherwise if a new game like rust comes out or if something happens in the community and things, people are going to be a lot less receptive and kind of kind to of face punch like they've been over like the whole course of the game. Yeah, no, I I can see I can see where you're coming from. We, we've been saying that for Rust Quantum for like every single year. It feels like we're like this is the year it's going to pick up. No, this is the year it's going to die. So it seems like it's very apparent in both communities that we have the same sense of is it going to die? Is it going to make or break? Um, so fl flipping the script a bit, how much do you know uh, about Rust Console and what, what do you think about it? So yeah, for Rust Console, I actually downloaded it um, after I started speaking with you because 
I was like, yeah, he's probably gonna ask me this question. I, I used to play a lot of Xbox and do like Xbox Clan stuff on like yeah. Halo Reach when I was a kid. And uh, even now, like my uh, break from gaming is like on PC is actually to play the Xbox where I could do like a story game and just have some time to myself. So I think I put it up around a week ago and um, I mean, not too many positive comments for like playing on PC. The graphics are better. Yeah. I've been using mouse and keyboard, you know, for my whole life pretty much. So it's a lot easier to use that for Rust, but it felt like the game was very like laggy and unoptimized. And uh, something I think they're adding too, which hopefully they'll add soon to console Rust. I don't know if you guys have this, is I think they're working on a tutorial island for March, which that'll be in like PC. And hopefully that's the same case for uh, console Rust. Because yeah, when I came in, didn't know the controls, even though I know how to use the Xbox controller, I play yeah. different games. Um, it was like a huge barrier to entry on that. But then again, I walked around like some monument, I think it was like what airfield and I saw big bases and like skins and lights. And so it's clear to me that even though I don't know how to play the game right now myself, and it's probably gonna take me some time to like learn is there's a pretty active community to be building those things, which I assume take a lot longer to build on the console version of the game than they might take on the PC. Yeah, do you think, because obviously you mentioned that is something said throughout the Rust console community at this moment in time. Because it was brought out in May 2021, it was optimized for both gens, but they targeted towards more of old gens at the time. Now, the latest old gen is coming up to 10 years old, and we're getting GTA 6 next year, so the shift for new gen is obviously more alive than ever. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm alive to see it, but. We're, do you think the game Rust Console would have a huge influx of players if it became a new gen only version game within the next year or two, or do you think it would kind of lose players because obviously it's been optimized for both game, uh, both gens being like the PS4 and the PS5? Yeah. So just to confirm on your question too, when you mean like new gen, you mean more of like ease of access, kind of more mainstream of like a survival game, right? So it would be kind of just played on new gen only consoles and the old gens would be just they wouldn't be able to play it so it, the the graphics and the performance yeah as you said they'd be bumped up so 60 fps graphics would be better maybe maybe we get uh, more updates faster is is something other people raise and it's it's funny because obviously <laughs> this is the first this is the thing that people always say they're like the graphics are absolute dog shit and i'm like yeah we've been asking for a new gen only version because the new gens have kind of been held back by it being optimized on on both consoles and something that also struck me was um talking about updates that you mentioned we've been given a roadmap but i'm not sure if uh pc get this uh, this similar treatment we got given a roadmap and that we know of we're getting three updates this year one military tunnels which is coming out on thursday uh, this thursday then we're getting underwater labs in May and a quote unquote secret update um, that is coming with in August, I believe. So how many updates does PC get a year? So usually at this point, I, I believe PC like back in the day, just for comparison to was probably getting at least two or three updates like a month. And now we get one update that's scheduled at the, you know, force wipe is what everybody calls it on the first Thursday of every month. So it would probably be around 12 and then they have patches and things too but people don't consider those to be updates what about kind of monument updates oh damn yeah that's a good question it's been a it's been a long time it was crazy to think back in the day that we used to get like a monument um update like every couple of weeks like you know early in and even around 2017 really? 2018 yeah yeah they're oh adding a bunch of stuff so God. satellite dish airfield launch site um like a lot of cool monuments but i'm trying to think of when the last time a big like addition to the game was added like that um that's really hard for me too because i i'm thinking of like yeah they kind of merged the outpost stuff oil rig's been around for a super long time so it's not really too new i guess the ferry terminal mm. was uh was probably the most recent one when they wanted to do the nexus system which is where servers would connect together so if you played on like face punch one and there was face punch two and they had 500 people people could swap their gear through like a, a ferry terminal um i'm not really too sure 
if they're still working on that or what happened with that. It's kind of the same thing with the HDRP is they Face Punch has this like, you know, history of working on something and then they just kind of abandon it if it gets a little bit too hard and then if people complain maybe they'll come back to it. But we'll have to see if that happens this year. Yeah, a lot of that is foreign language to probably a lot of console players because obviously we're God knows how many years behind uh, what PC are at, but that's expected obviously with us optimizing on both. I think they did it with Minecraft too. When I played Minecraft when I was a kid, uh, they, it was actually cool because I never got to like really remember the experience, but they had it where they were starting out with like the 2008 like, version of the game yeah. whenever it was released and then it would slowly kind of progress over time. Um, I don't think Rust kind of did that for your guys' stuff though, huh? <laughs> it's more more into it or yeah no um you didn't give you legacy or anything instead of okay I, like let's start with this i when i think back to beta days i so i came into rust not actually knowing a single thing it was completely brand new to me survival based game and i was like it was kind of at the point where i didn't play xbox as much so i went from playing little to no xbox to playing six seven hours a day getting about five hours sleep some of us had work in the morning going on three hours sleep it was addiction to the next level because obviously we've never experienced anything like this so, so the performance because obviously we weren't aware of how good it could be because we hadn't watched videos prior we were kind of just going along for the ride sort of thing and we we're like yeah this is this is fun until we actually saw pc and we're like oh this is what it's supposed to be like uh so that's when our expectations dropped we we're like damn this game's got a long way to go. How, how, how do you kind of talk amongst your community or other content creators about Rust Console? Or is it something people are just like, I don't even want to think about what that game kind of looks like? Yeah, so for Rust Console, it's, um, it's pretty interesting because I feel like it was talked about a lot before it actually came out. And then when I think it uh, came out, people didn't really talk about it too much. Like, I remember going on, like, the Play Rust... Uh, subreddit. Sorry, there's like a big. Uh, no, I, you're good, man. You're so good. Hopefully. It's not too bad. But um, yeah, so what was I saying there? Um, is like, yeah, I posted a thing on like the r slash playrust subreddit saying, oh, you know, look, uh, Stallion, who's like a big person on the Xbox who has like a million gamer score, had like Rust or something on their profile. And there was like a little tab for it. And I think that was just uh, Windows connecting it. But yeah, over time, I feel like there was a lot of hype for it when it came out, and you know, virtually these days, nobody talks about it. Um, the only channels, I think there's like Serial Overdrive is one of the guys, and then there's you, and there's a, there's a couple other people. Um, but most of the content I actually see for it is I don't see uh, uh, too many like story wipes or anything like that from Console Rust. I usually see the commentary videos, like your videos, for example, or yeah. Serial Overdrive talking about like the issues with cheating and things. So it's definitely, even for creators, probably like a really different space than a uh, PC. Yeah, I would say for creators, it's kind of like a gold mine at the moment. Obviously, I did story wipes with the team when we were doing content, and probably the only other person I would say is sort of like a carbon copy of what you would see on PC is what Obi's doing. He does story solo wipes and and playing with his friends uh, something you mentioned um earlier uh, when we when we were talking was the recoil and obviously this is something that the recoil is probably the most spoken thing throughout both communities but with the recoil change something i'm surprised with and i could be wrong in saying this does it feel as if there's more cheating than ever on PC rust than it was before the recall update, or am I wrong in saying that? I think you'd be correct. I mean, this is kind of a controversial like take for me too. Some people might get upset. I mean, unless you have hard data to go and like analyze what's going on, it's hard to say for sure what was happening. But I think a big issue was when 2000, it was 2022 in June or July is when they added the combat update in. And a lot of people were pissed off. I think a lot of people decided to give it a chance. Even like OG people were like, oh, it's time for like a new change for the recoil. Like, this is good. And I assume they thought like it was going to be like last time where they're going to keep testing it and stuff. But they're yeah. like, no, this is it. You kind of keep it. And uh, yeah, this is fine. You know, this is good for newer players or whatever the case is. And so I think there was a bunch of people in the community who were pissed off 
um some of them it's, it's just so interesting to think too because they were like oh i'm addicted to this game like i want to ruin rust so i like never play it again type of thing because they did this to me so you know how do i like stop my like addiction well i'll just start cheating and i'll get banned from all these servers so you had the people who are kind of doing like the suicide mentality for some reason um i've never like been <laughs> that much into rust to be like that to like yeah i'm having such a bad wife i'm just gonna <laughs> download sheets right now and get banned i'm like no just Fucking take a break from the game, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was uh, one of the things. And then there was also the people who are very like egotistical this game kind of draws in, right? Because it's like, oh, we got this learnable recoil system and you invest all these hours into playing the game. So you're going to tr start treating it like real life a little bit. You know what I mean? It takes 10,000 hours to like master skill. People have double that on, so it's like a religion. And for those guys who would master the recoil, we're also pissed off because they're like, okay, what's my permanent progression now? Like, what are people gonna know me for? I used to be the AK spray god on UKN, you know, beaming people from, you know, 500 meters away. What am I gonna do now? And so for those guys, instead of like where scripting used to be an issue, which is kind of like, I think it's like the Zen Zen thing you were saying there, right? Is that kind of with the keyboard mouse is previously for people who don't know for console players, is there was like Bloody Mouse, I think in like 2017 or 2018 that got popular. There was like Auto Hotkey, which were these uh, attachments you could go and use, which would like, I don't know like the technicals behind it, but it made you have like perfect spray. So you could just aim and shoot at somebody. And that was probably the worst cheating it had gotten for like a long time. And everybody just stayed at that meta. But there was always people complaining about scripting or there being problems with it. But for the most part, if you were caught doing that, it was looked down upon, right? People said, no, we don't want to play with these people um, and all that type of thing. And so when pretty much when they changed that, it went from scripting being kind of like the median to, OK, well, now it's all about game sense now, right? So let me start downloading ESP. And uh, there's so much aim cone on this recoil. Let me just go and start using aimbot all together. And like, let's see how far I can go. And that was, uh, I think that's pretty much where we're at right now too is people have just been doing it for so long you get cheated on and then you feel like the need to cheat on somebody else and then the cycle continues indefinitely yeah so uh, uh, kind of filling you in on the the cheating problem that console has i, I and i i have this take of i think more than 50 percent of the community is cheating that i've ran into so many people that even just post it on tiktok to, uh, tiktok now of their mouse and keyboard they're zen, they're zim, they don't care, they don't even get banned, which is why I find it ironic when I when I got banned. Yeah, but, yeah, that's pretty fair. So, the the story behind it is, is that obviously the first couple of wipes, people were gauging the game, learning it, but looking back on it, there was a lot of players that were playing on the mouse and keyboard, so there's this other device called a Zim Apex, which allows you to play mouse and keyboard on console games. Um, given that obviously you would have to play the same settings as a controller would, although you can play obviously higher settings than a controller player would because you're on mouse and keyboard. A lot of players came over from Siege, a lot of people that I've spoken to came over even from PC because their IRL friends had Rust console and couldn't you know, save up for a PC or for one reason or another. So then mouse and keyboard players came in um, and started playing. And it wasn't really looked down. People didn't really know about it at the time. But then Zen was, as you said, the bloody mouse in, in PC. And that was abused and still is abused. People were using that. There, it felt because of we have this previous knowledge of what PC Rust is. I've always said it felt like that we just had no real time to kind of enjoy the game for its competitive side because people were already looking for ways to be better. They see how people are better on PC, and they see people advertising it, and they're like, well, how can I be better on console now? I have no recall. Oh, Corona Zen. And so it just felt like the time period of legit players was just not in a way. Um, it was just so short, and it was looked down upon until every team I see is on these devices. I'm not even kidding. Uh, it's insane. So we have a huge cheating problem, which I'm speaking to like the community manager actively talked about. You know, is there going to be an anti-cheating? Obviously, I can't speak about that. Um, but it seems as if both 
your community or the PC Rust community and the console community both have a yeah. chilling problem. I feel like in general the gaming industry, I'm not sure how far you go back in terms of gaming, but when I used to trick shot on Call of Duty and everything like that, people would look down upon and absolutely hate those who cheated. And now it's just somewhat accepted. Yeah, it, it's such an interesting concept with like cheating because it is a game, right? It is for fun. But yeah. I think the issue came to be at least for like the PC community where I've seen this happen all the time where you know somebody for years and you think they're really good at the game and they've been kind of like lying to you in a sense, right? Where, you know, they've been cheating or they've been doing something weird, which is like, you'll see this happen like almost every day in some group where, oh, I've known this person for two years and they were actually, you know, I thought they were really good and they were just cheating. And well, do I not be their friend anymore? Or like, how does that work? Because that's a lot of time to go and spend um, with somebody. But it's, it's unfortunate, I think, for the mob mentality and just the general progression of things. Um, like you were mentioning too, we also have the same issue with Face Punch's communication on how what they're doing with like the the cheating situation. They say, "Hey, if we tell you, uh, it's gonna you know give the cheaters more access to kind of like break our like measures, and then if we don't tell you, you're gonna get like upset." So I think the best anti-cheating thing, and I've just spoke with somebody about this recently too, and I'm who knows, I might even make my own video to do like a part two on like the cheating doc I, for my uh, first thing, was that easy anti-cheat is not a very good service because it's universal. Do you guys have easy anti-cheat or? We don't, do ha have? We don't have an anti-cheat. The only anti-cheat that- There's we, no way anti-cheat? That's nuts. The, what the, the anti-cheat that we have that I've apparently we have is the one that stops people from literally hacking like ESP flying around but we have no anti-cheat going against people who may be on a mouse and keyboard or have no recall because technically the consoles cannot detect it yeah hence that's why super unfortunate. yeah hence why so much of the community gets away with cheating yeah and so I think that might actually come into play obviously this is just me being like you know speculating on stuff Nothing I say is 100%, you know, correct always. But I believe, like, Easy Anti-Cheat likely has a deal with Face Punch where they have, like, a contract, right? So if you're like, oh, I'm going to make, you know, YouTube videos for this, like, company or something, for this brand, I'm going to do this for this amount of time, I can't leave until I'm, like, done my term. I feel like that's what they're locked into as well, because Easy Anti-Cheat was made for games in general. I think you might see, I'm trying to think of some games right now hard to remember but like most games you can go and like see the EAC pop up and things but it's not specific to rust right so mm -hmm. for it being out for so long already people have found ways to continually go and break it and since they rely on that you know system themselves they're not really I don't really think they're actively working on like anti-cheat stuff besides informing that company to go and do that and for how many complaints and things they get you feel like they would just switch or like start working on their own stuff. But I assume there's some type of business reason behind them not doing that, which is currently where we're at for everything. And that's just speculation. This doesn't mean it's like 100% true. I've just been thinking about the issue for almost a year. So I'm, <laughs> that's what I like assume might be the case. Uh, uh, I've had this. I've been thinking about the issue since I first started creating content for this flipping game. But yeah, it's... It's a, it's a bittersweet one to take because people think, oh, if you ban all the people that are cheating, then your game's going to die. And I'm like, there's got to be a way you can just ban devices or ban the cheat in system somehow so that the player can still play, but whatever they were trying to do, they can't do. I don't know if you're aware of what Rainbow Six, of, uh, Rainbow Six Siege have just done. People that are on mouse and keyboard playing against controller players, their system, or anti-cheat if you will, when they detect someone on a mouse and keyboard, they've now made their game cross-play, so those mouse and keyboard players that are cheating on console then go on and play against PC players. So it's more of a fair game, which I think is a great move. However, it's kind of sad because I'm like, well, that game's nothing like Rust. So if we can't, we can't do cross-play with PC Rust because okay, our consoles would blow up. So it's it's... It's really... Yeah, there's definitely, and that's not Face Punch's fault, I don't no. think either. There's just definitely like a technological divide. I think you asked me um, 
earlier about like oh for new gen or old gen consoles initially i thought you were talking about because i always use those terms for like players in the scene so i thought you were talking about really like 2018 <laughs> yeah so they're super common that i was like no i'm dumb this guy's talking about like the console generations for like playstation 4 to uh ps5 and uh i wanted to put a comment in on that is to give you like an example of why i think it should only be new gen is honestly in the best interest of uh the players because you know my dad he plays games too and he bought cyberpunk mm. i think it was 2077 when it came out a couple years ago and he's super you know he's from like the 80s and stuff so he's all into that loads up the game and the game's complete trash like nothing's <laughs> moving he's on like the old gen console and he's still you know in his like little happy uh, you know place like oh look at how great this game is and stuff jack and i'm like dad like this game's like not that great you should just yeah. wait until like the new gen comes but the whole thing is they want to monetize as much as they can which is kind of like the questionable part so people will put products forward where you know if the car doesn't or the tire doesn't fit on like the car and it still drives somewhat that's okay to go and yeah. like sell and so i think it's in the best interest you know, for like you wouldn't want to play rust in the worst possible conditions and i think that might be holding the, the game back and things as well so yeah. i just i remembered you had mentioned that earlier i just wanted to mention that real quick so yeah, no, it's, it's something that I hope to God we get within the next year or so, even though the community manager said to me, it doesn't look like we have no... It, they, he's not going to say anything to me, because obviously he doesn't want to hurt people that are on old gen, but he said we're not thinking of that anytime soon, which in my news videos erupted a, a lot of feelings for those who are on new gen. Um, but with, with Rust Console, we have a really dedicated competitive side to it or we did where players will go to the lengths of cheating to appear to be the best um in the game and obviously watching your videos both on the clan and competitive scene the the history of rust clans coming up from beta to now where i've just literally played in a clan that i created with some friends it was really interesting to see from a pc's perspective because we've kind of gone through the same times but obviously consoles been quicker what, what's your true definition since you've you've been back in the OG days as, as you've explained what's your true kind of point of view of what a comp team is is it who's the best at pvp or who's the best at raiding or a combination of who's the best at just surviving and dominating other teams yeah absolutely so i would say people and their for the clan scene i was exposed to so i'm 22 now and when i started playing rust i was maybe like 13 or 14. Yeah. And a lot of the people I saw were guys who were, you know, college age, maybe they were early, mid-20s. And they all played games previously or like the Internet wasn't like people weren't just talking to each other on Discord and stuff back in the day. Uh, it was a lot more like closed off. Like usually the people you played with, um, you, you knew those people somewhat in real life. So usually I started from a bunch of friend groups and then the, a bunch of the friends leave and somebody wants to keep playing. And I think the big thing that makes like a winning team is not even just your skill or like knowledge of Rust, but the time you will invest. So Rust is all a game about time, meaning if I stay up until four or five in the morning or I can screw you on time zones or something like that, like I live in Hawaii and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and raid you. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win the game even if I'm not that good. And the whole thing is them or for people who are abusing time zones or people who are committing a lot of time they're learning more about the game just naturally from that case so it uh it kind of builds on itself so you have somebody who spends a lot of time they get better at the game they spend more time they get better at the game and then you have these people who some might consider addicted and things to rust because <laughs> it's a lot of time to be putting in on a weekly basis if you're doing school and work and those guys usually start getting very competitive and egotistical because it's for some people, it's a big part of their, you know, day to day kind of relaxation. But for a lot of people, it turns into their identity, right? Where they're like, I know how to use this recoil or I have this skin or, you know, I know these people in the community. So I think it's really uh, what makes a good team or a good team member is the time you invest into the game. The more time you invest, the better off you are. And that's always usually a consistent type of theme. Obviously, some people will put their time on UKN. And then some people like me, like I build hotels. I'm not that good with like the AK or anything like that. I didn't really even use it until recently because it was easier for me. 
because uh, I didn't want to learn how to use the spray because we just weren't getting to that progression, that I'm like worse on a competitive level. But it just really depends on like the time and what people decide to do with that time when they're playing Rust. You yeah, know, I, I, I could completely like um, understand the the way of playing Rust is pretty much addictive unless you don't have a team or unless it was online only which isn't the case like people get offline left right yeah. and center and screw people in time zones i can remember one time where so some of our teammates obviously have different jobs and i don't want to go into specifics but you go in there and you get a service from them so whilst i'm getting a service from them um two of them work together out back where they work they have an xbox hooked up and a, and a tv monitor so whilst they're doing their job and i'm there with them they quickly shout whilst there's other customers where they're working they shout we're getting raided we're getting raided and i'm there waiting for them to do something i have to get up whilst there's other people looking at us complete they're so confused and bizarre that they're like what is going on I have to go to the back out of their work to defend a raid. That's how much this game meant to us, I guess, at the peak of our interest. Like it, Russ, I don't know if it hit for the same for the PC side, but in terms of like Rust on console, this happened to so many people. There's so many people that have dedicated a whole, like a whole chunk of their life to this game i'm 24 now i started playing when i was what, 21 going into 22 and it was just uh, it's like those three years flashed by because the amount of time you put into the game i'm not sure how much how many hours you have in general i have 7,000 hours or 7, coming up on it i think i might be 20 away which is like oh no like you more you get into that 7k mark yeah but, can, uh, you, can you think of a time where you were like it was just almost like degenerative degenerative behavior that you were just playing the game solid for that amount of time. Can you think of a time where it was like that for you? Yeah, so I would say it was the case for me when I was growing up, going to uh, high school, and um, I was doing the hotels and stuff too. Not even just like, um, you know, competitive play, like running a clan. I just like building hotels. Like the big reason I personally like Rust and I'll continue to like it regardless of what Face Punch does is just for the social aspect. But I believe from 2016 to 2018, before they added upkeep, I, I for two years of like my life, I was playing like almost every wipe day, coming to build the hotel, uh, meeting new people. And like, I was, for me, I was calling sick out of school. Like I was going to the nurse's office, uh, trying to have my dad pick me up so I'd get home quicker, getting some subway, getting some food on the way back for the wipe. And it became this uh, tradition, and it was, it was a lot of fun. I didn't really like high school too much, and I feel like that might be the case for a lot of the kids too who play Rust. Is it's it's something to look forward to. You know, you feel like there's you're part of a bigger mission, or there's this like adventure kind of waiting for you at home. With these people you know online, you get to build relationships, and it becomes like a fun type of thing to get involved with. And that's why I feel like people are so passionate about it, because that kind of community and that. I guess tribalism too of like you know this is my clan this is my faction we're better than you and you know you better not come over and like raid our base or we're gonna raid you and then you get raided and then there's this whole story that develops and rust is unique because if you play like a game like call of duty the rainbow six siege you see somebody once and then you'll never see him again in the lobby but for rust you get to know people week after week after week and then this relationship forms, you get to know about like what they do sometimes in real life or like what their personality is about and who doesn't like this person. And so it starts feeling like a real type of war or like kind of, uh, you know, social politics going on in the game. And it's just, I, I honestly feel like they need to do university studies and stuff just for like how crazy Rust is and the, the people who play the game. Because there's just so much more going on with like the people themselves who play that just makes the game super fascinating for me at least. Uh, you you can only imagine how successful people would be if they put in the hours dedication to something that may have more of an outcome for society than playing than playing Rust because obviously Rust has been beneficial for so many people 
in their life it's been their livelihood it's their job it's their career and they love doing it which is very much respectful and obviously in this day and age content creation is now turning uh, the wheel of fortune of not just being a hobby or a passion project for many people is their job and people are kind of getting used to that but I always find it funny looking at how players I, I if I wasn't doing content uh, for the game or creating videos because I love doing that I don't think I'll be playing Rust as much as I used to I wouldn't be playing the game period because I had fun and that's kind of gone just playing the aspect of it so I tip my hat off when I see players that don't create content, they just play the game because they love it and they skip school. And I'm just kind of like, well, if you put that to something that, I don't know, maybe may something you like doing outside of Rust and you put that amount of time into it, God knows how far so many other Rust players would be in terms of in terms of success and maybe doing something that doesn't make them depressed as much as Rust does and lose sleep over. So that's just, it, it really bewilders me sometimes, like people are so toxic and you're kind of like, well, invest that sort of thing and passion into something that is not so toxic and may have more of an outcome and maybe more financially beneficial for you, is, then yeah, you would probably have a better life than sitting in rust and just seemingly for a lot of players wasting away. But it, right, as I said, rust has been beneficial for many players and many content creators and this is where it kind of leads me to the last question of and i'll ask this to everyone who i have uh on this and oh, would i be able to put a comment real quick yeah, on your yeah, last for, one i just i just it. had something i wanted to say there so um yeah this is something i've been thinking about recently too but um you you mentioned like for like the time investment and things like that where like a lot of people you know uh we assume right for the hours you clock in that they probably don't really have too much going on outside of the game if you yeah. really want to be successful but the something i want you to think about and i want the viewers to think about is ask yourself how much does it cost to go and play like rust on pc right it's going to usually and you want to play it like pretty well you don't want to play on some like potato that barely works otherwise you wouldn't enjoy the game and usually the price range of for all the equipment for like a you know, high-end gaming setups gonna probably range from around three to four thousand dollars. Yeah. Who has three to four thousand dollars? Well, some kids' parents do. You know, who they're doing pretty well, or some people are just barely getting by, and then they're gonna like invest into Rust. But you'd be very surprised to see the people in the PC community, and this might be like a little bit of a difference for the player base. Is a lot of them aren't like young kids, at least for my community and what I've seen. A lot of them are business owners. Some of them are like multi-millionaires. Um, some of them work for like, you know, big names companies. I'm not gonna dox anybody or anything no. like that. But um, for a long time, I was always confused because I'd meet these people. Like I've gotten, like my last job I worked, I actually got it from somebody who I knew in Rust. It was like a remote sales job. And I was like, wow, that's like a really cool, crazy opportunity. And then I was like, well, why are there all these like successful people, at least for me, that I've seen beyond like just content creation, right? If you get to know somebody in like their line of work. Um, and it was because Rust is like a very kind of high barrier game to actually get into, at least on PC. And I, you never see anybody talk about this too, which is I'm like super surprised. But yeah, for those types of people who are very committed to like running a business, or you know kind of have that compulsive thing where it's like okay let me just keep playing like we got to get this done this is super important those are usually the the people who are pretty successful as well and so it was interesting to see like even for playing in this fancy herb event some of the guys were like running their businesses while playing the event and they're like workaholics and they like rust because it like feels it fits into that vibe but then it has that social aspect to it so um yeah, sorry to cut you off on the last one. I just thought that would be very interesting for you, the viewers, to kind of look at that perspective. It's not the case for everyone, but it's something interesting I've noticed recently. No, 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 you're you're perfect. You're perfectly fine there. I, I think something to add to that as well is I completely see the business side of PC Rust. There's so many business-minded people, and a lot of the people on that game are fairly much within their 20s and or 18 yeah. going into adulthood. So it's much more of a mature, I mean, dare I say mature, uh, the people I've come across on PC Rust, the time I played it, unbelievable language, insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rough, man. But Rust console, the consoles, you get you get given by your parents for Christmas or you like, 
come home from school and you're like, oh yeah, let's play Xbox or PlayStation. My, most of these people are kids that watch watch our content, and so many people say to me, well, how do I get big, or can you shout me out? And I'm like, you've got to have some sort of a business mind to be like, this content will do well, this thumbnail looks good, this challenge to doing Rust will do well, and the editing, the narration, all these things people don't factor in. There's not even a handful of people that I've spoken to that are like this within the Rust console community. It seems as if there's not enough or not a lot of creators as opposed to the PC side. So yeah, to add to that, console's in a completely different situation. We don't have enough creators. There's only a few that I know and not even a handful that I've spoken to that are that are like that. A lot of them are kids and the people that are big on the platform that I know are within their 20s. So it's, it's very interesting to see the contrast between uh, the PC and console community, but then again, I'm not surprised due to the time difference. We've been going for three years, PC's been going for 10 years. There's obviously going to be a substantial uh, amount of difference in between the uh, the player base. But yeah, as I, as I was saying, that one, the last question I want to get to, uh, as I want to ask everyone this, is what's one thing you'd add to Rust that's not been in the game previously and that's not been like hinted at by face punch something that you would think of off the top of your head that you've never seen before and one thing you'd also bring back so one thing that's new that's never seen before and one thing you bring back from the past uh in the current day of rust yeah absolutely so this is something i thought about too while working on the recent video on the recoil and i believe i mentioned it at the end of the video was the carbon mod I think is the way Rust needs to go because I definitely feel Rust is getting to that point of legendary status. They just need to open the game up a little bit more. People complain, oh, Rust is not a sandbox anymore. And, you know, I have to follow like the recoil and all this type of stuff. But imagine you didn't have to do any of that. You could make your own like version of Rust that kind of sticks to like its core mechanics and build off of that. And so like Shadow Frax, who I'd like shout out for this, he does a good video um, explaining, you know, all the stuff you do. There's like anti-gravity, you do play older versions of the game. Um, it just opens up the potential to make it, for people to make the game the game they want it to be. And that they're not forced into an ecosystem with updates. Because at some point, there's really only so much you can go and do. So I think if Face Punch goes and endorses the idea of modded Rust for PC and eventually console, like I've seen playing Minecraft with my buddy on the Xbox the other day and there's freaking cars in the game and like for me seeing like the 2013 version where there was like no food or anything and it was only like the hard cars and there was like nothing added that like blew me away that they could go and do it and I think it's completely possible for Rust unfortunately from you know some knowledge uh and maybe I'll get in trouble for mentioning this too is that I'm pretty sure Face Punch is not going to endorse the Carbon mod because they're worried about cheating and things like that as well. And it doesn't look like they're doing anything in-house to go and kind of work on that type of development. And I think if Rust wants to be around for 20 years, because I think Minecraft's almost at that point, they should highly consider going and opening up the game to coders and modders to make and, you know, kind of leaving their ecosystem there for people who are just getting started to go and learn. And then people can play the game the way they want it to be. And I think that will extend the, the lifespan greatly of the game for everybody. So, Do you think with the current state of, of Rust and how it is, do you, can you see it going for another 10 years? Um, so, yeah, something I've... Uh, like this is like a little bit personal about me, but I think it's cool to share here is I used to like I my IRL professions in sales. I've been usually doing video editing and stuff mostly. But I used to work in um, commercial lending. And one of the biggest things uh, for when you're giving money to somebody is like, how long have you been in business for? And there is a statistic, and I don't know like the exact law for it or whatever the case is, but if you've been around for five years, you'll be around for like another five years. And I believe Rust, you know, fortunately has made it past that mark to where, you know, they're definitely not too big to fail, but I foresee as long as they don't continue to kind of drop the ball and not listen, uh, it's going to be very hard for like another game to come and take them out. But if they keep going on the direction they're doing now, even though they have like a massive, massive 10 year advantage, uh, it's very easy too to go and kind of lose that advantage where like a game like Power World would come out. You know what I mean? And that has a million 
concurrent users for a couple of months and if they keep continue adding on the game that game was really close to rust at its core or what it used to be then uh then i could see it kind of failing but i would say at least right now like a safe estimate for everybody who wants to invest into skins and stuff yeah you're probably going to be okay for at least five years um, and ideally, if they go and listen and they do like modded rust and kind of just hit, face punch gets better with their communication and things, you could probably see it going for, you know, another 10 years. And then now they're at the 20 year mark, who knows, maybe the game's going to be around for 20 years. But with technology and things like that in general, I think uh, society is moving at like an exponential rate in regards to that. So nobody knows what the new trend's gonna be, if that's gonna be VR or something else. So Rust might not fit in that piece of the puzzle in the future, who knows? Oh, uh, well, that's 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 all I've, uh, I've got for you, Jack. Thank you so much for- um, Yeah, thanks for having for, me. For, for answering the questions. I don't wanna keep you too long, since you, obviously, everyone's got their own stuff going on in their life. What's your next video? If you wanna, if you wanna plug it real quick, if people made it to yeah. this far into the video, what's your up and coming one? So uh, the next one's gonna be, and nobody, this is the first here too for people to hear it. So if they're like a viewer of mine, they'll be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Is uh, the Vincent SMG documentary. Uh, do you know who Vincent is or? <laughs> he's kind of like that loud American, I think he's Italian. It seems like he's <laughs> Italian as well, but American guy. Yeah, I think I saw him in Blueprint's video or fake of him. Yeah, I do know of him. Yeah, Americans, Americans tend to be pretty loud, but he's been this character who's actually been playing you know, uh, as long as I have been playing the game. But he's extremely controversial for like his raging. And uh, the whole video is to discuss like, is this guy actually the most toxic streamer? Is he misunderstood? Is he actually malicious? Kind of talking about some of the crazy interactions he's had. Like he's the first person to get like a seven day game ban for toxicity and rust. Never happened before. It's crazy it wasn't permanent. Been banned off Twitch multiple times. And so everybody's kind of heard about him but they don't really know too much about him. And so we're going to kind of figure out or at least let the viewer decide, you know, oh, do you think Vincent's a good guy or not? And uh, it should be pretty interesting. So Perfect. All right. Thank you, Jack. Uh, appreciate the Thanks time you've so given. Much. And um, yeah, be sure, uh, be sure to check his channel out and all his links. Mm -hmm.